In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Slice tool to generate a section perspective. Um, I've made a copy of my model. So here's the original and here's the copy. And what I'm going to do first is to generate a plane that will act as a section plane. This is a little bit similar to the section that we cut previously, but you basically chop the model into um, half and then you can remove half of it so you can see inside. So I'm going to go to the right view and from that position I'll make a rectangle. And I'll align that rectangle with the mass that I've been work that I've been uh, that I began with. And then I'll go back to the southeast view. From the southeast view, I'll move that plane into uh, a position. Um, I'm going to start by going to the move command. And when it asks me to select objects, I'll input L for the last object that um, I worked on. And you can see the rectangle has appeared. And I'm just going to move this rectangle to the position where I'd like to take my slice. Now, I'll use as a reference this cone object that I generated for my bathroom. And I'm going to snap to the center of that cone. Then what I'll do is I will go to the top view to check and make sure it is placed where I like it. So here's the plane that I just generated. And I will then go back to my south west or rather southeast view. And from there I will go to the solid ribbon and use the slice tool. All right, now for the slice tool, it'll ask you what you want to, um, to slice. And I basically want to slice only a few things in the model. But if I make a window around everything, it will select everything. All right, so it says it's found 87 pieces, but it won't be able to slice things unless they're within the slice plane. Okay, so it asks me to specify the start point of the slicing plane, and there are different ways that you can select this. I'm going to use three points, and my first point will be the end point of that rectangle. So I'm going to type in END. And then I'm going to select two other points along that plane. All right? And it'll ask me if I want to keep both sides or just one. And for the time being, I'll, I'll accept the default of both. OK, so what you might have noticed is that um, now the main mass has been split. And I can then begin to go in and eliminate things that are on one half of the line. You might find that this is easier to do from the top view. So I will go to top view. And as you can see, I've already erased half of the model. And then I'll proceed with erasing the rest of the things that are on the one side of the, of the slice plane. Okay, you might have to zoom in a little closer until you've gotten all of the objects. All right, now this, because it's a block, may have not allowed me to slice it, and I can manually come in and, and slice that individual object as well. And now I'll erase my temporary slice plane, and I'm ready to position a camera. So the camera um, will be positioned somewhere over here, and it'll look directly perpendicular to the model. Um, once I have that set, I'll, I'll render the view. So I've created a camera. I'm going to position it roughly in this position. I type in perpendicular, so I'm looking directly at a wall. Click on the camera. And then you can make adjustments to the height. You can change the field of view, which will create a wider view. Uh, 
Um, now I'll continue with the placement of the camera. Um, as you can see, part of the image is, is cut off. So I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to move it. Uh, we'll try moving it over, say, five feet or so. And then click on the camera to get a view. Um, so we're getting closer. I think that it needs to be lower, so I'm more positioned as if I were standing in a room. So I'm going to change my camera uh, Z position and target position to about 8 feet. Okay. Um, and another thing that I want to do is, you know, when I do this rendering, I'm going to get this line that appears here. And since this is supposed to be earth mass, what I'm going to do is I'm going to face extrude the underside of the model so that it, it goes much deeper. So I'll close my preview and I will use the 3D orbit tool so that I'm looking at the model from the underside like so and I'll go to the um, the home tab here and I'll use the face extrude or extrude faces tool and it'll take a little bit to select the right surface but it's going to be that one and you know, I'm going to make this a height of, of 50 feet and then I will go back to my view and check to make sure that it is where I wanted to place it. So as you can see now the earth math mass is completely filling this, this area underneath it and so I will begin to get ready to run my rendering. So here's a draft rendering and I, I feel like I'm a little bit too far away from the view so I'm going to readjust my camera position so I'm closer and I might have to widen the field of view a little bit. All right. So I've moved the camera in closer and I've adjusted the field of view to um, a quite wide angle, 110 degrees and I'll run another rendering. So I've re-rendered it, I've moved in a little closer. Now I feel like I've, I've cut off the edges a little bit so I might need to move back. Other things you can play with um, are the, the shadows. You know, you can, you can run the shadows so they're coming in to the open cut. You can also run the shadows so they're coming in from the opposite side um, by just changing the time of day that the, the image is taken. Um, this is a, a low rendering and I'm sure if you ran it at a higher rendering um, you would get more detail and more softness in the shadows, but uh, generally this is the idea that you would create a one-point perspective of the section.